Welcome everyone to the real history of the world. A lot of times we talk about events and we know that something is wrong and it wasn't exactly reported exactly the way it happened. Now this series is meant to debunk a lot of those rumors and it's also going to talk about how we got here. We all talk about the deep state and the cabal and the Khazarian mafia, but really no one knows where they came from. You know, we talk about what happened to Earth. Why is Earth in such a shambles? How did the three Earths or the three energetic Earths uh, become divided? This series is designed to take you from the very, very beginning, literally the beginning. And we're going to learn exactly how we as humans got here. Uh, this is version human 7.0. Uh, we're going to start to talk about what happened with Earth and what's happened on Earth and how we've defended ourselves over the years as humans uh, and how we got along with everyone that lives here in the past and really give you a better understanding of what happened here. So let's start at the very, very beginning. The beginning of time or before time was actually called crystalline time. And that's how many others in the multiverse refer to it. Crystalline time is a time when only source was there. There was nothing else. It was just pure light, pure beings of light. Uh, these would be what you would kind of call angels in the Bible. These were, this was only source. So at one point during crystalline time, darkness was created. The equal and opposite of our source, but it was source, our creator, the creator, God, as you would say, created both sides, both the dark and the light. Now, why did that happen? That happened because when there's only pure light exists, no density can exist. So in order to create matter throughout the multiverse, source decided to create ultimate darkness. Now, and only now, was it possible to create density. Like we talk about we're living in the third density, which means that we have bodies that have shape and form. Now, there are several layers of density at this time. There were six that existed on the light side of the universe. Now, don't confuse densities with dimensions. And I say this often, I interchange the two and I shouldn't. Dimensions have to do with the energetic grid that existed in the multiverse, not densities. So these are what you would call like the major arcana um, of division between races. So those that existed on the light side of the universe existed in all the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth density. So like if you lived in the eighth density, your body may have shape and form, but it's almost pure light. For example, the Arcturians live in the eighth density and they are made of pure blue light um, and they sparkle and they have a shape, they have a form. You can have a conversation with them, but they're almost pure light. And then of course you get down to the third. So imagine if you had a conical shape or like a flashlight coming from the, the light all the way to the third density and then on down to the lower sixth. This is what the multiverse looked like. It was like um, an energy binding in the shape of a Metatron's cube, which kept everything, I guess you would say, together. But the third density was always right in the middle. And that is why the planets that lived in the third density or existed in the third density, I should say live, uh, including Earth, Terra and Midgard, were so important uh, to conquer from others that were looking for the dark side to rule. So at this time, once the densities were created and source made an ultimate dark side source or omega side, you know, in the Bible, it talks about sources, the, the alpha and the omega. And that's the reason why, because he created both sides. Now, not to say that source meant harm for us, but 
in the beginning, it was supposed to have a dark side and a light side, and the two were not were supposed to coexist in a balanced way. And that's not exactly what happened, as you know. Let's go on beyond crystalline time. Now that densities were created by the creator itself, the creator light, source of all life, now the planets started to shake, shape and form. So other beings that existed within source, and around source, I should say, beings of light tend uh, began to travel throughout different densities. And as they did, they created life on planets after the planets came to be. Now, they were pretty amazing beings that were subservient to source. They would never do anything against source, never violate free will or natural law, but they were doing the creator's work by seeding different races directly from heaven, so to speak. Uh, and then, of course, these all became beings of light. Well, on the dark side, it was the opposite. And we were smack dab in the middle, so we got hit a lot. So let's go through a little bit more. So if you were to equate this time, the beginning of time in Earth years, I mean, you would have to go back 197 billion years ago to try to gauge when this happened and how long the planets have been in, been in existence. And it's been an enormous amount of time. Now for Earth, Earth uh, had an original race. Uh, those were the Saurians. Uh, in our history books, they start to talk about them as dinosaurs. And they don't look like the dinosaurs that they show on uh, TV. Uh, they do have a similar type shape, uh, maybe the tail. They are walking upright. Uh, hands are a little bit smaller, quite tall, uh, and quite peaceful. Uh, lovely beings. Now, Earth originally uh, existed in the fifth density, and the Saurians did as well. And Earth was quite tropical from top to bottom, uh, had kind of one season, I guess you would say, at that time. And that's what right after Earth became, I guess you would say, fully terraformed. Now, Time travel. People talk about time travel like going forward and backward in time. And that's actually not the case. It's actually how you travel throughout the multiverse. You know, these people on TV with NASA and they talk about, oh, it took us five years to get to Mars. That is completely incorrect. That is for human consumption. They're lying to you. Time travel has been in existence even here on Earth for around, I don't know, almost 18 billion Earth years. It's been quite a long time since beings that have lived on Earth have been traveling through space and time. And that's typically done through points in the, I guess you would say, the dimensional grid where uh, the time-space continuum uh, connects or, or folds over. And then you would, it's literally like you're bending through the grid and you end up in the next place you wanted to go uh, this way. I mean, I'm going to put it, I would just say, lightly uh, for the purpose of this uh, series. But that's been happening for a long, long time. The Space Force didn't create it here on Earth. They showed up much, much, much later. Uh, this, like I said, um, you know, it's been billions of years since the races were coming and going from Earth and, of course, every other planet in every density and every dimension. Now, in order to manage this, I guess you would say time travel or travel from one dimension density and planetary system to another, the Universal Council was created. Now, the Universal Council is kind of like the United Nations, not the bad part, but a place where all of the different races come together as one, and they make decisions and write rules and regulations and how those interact. And it also serves sometimes as a court. So if one race is interacting with another one improperly or broke the rules of time and space travel, that is where the Universal Council would set up a court, so to speak, and they would hear both sides of the story and, and make a ruling. Uh, some things that have happened at the Universal Council uh, would be the Abraxas violated an agreement. Uh, you know, that happened constantly. But 
you know, even they have their limits on what they can do. Now, underneath the Universal Council, there is a, that's a multi-universal council, by the way, serves all densities, all beings everywhere. Um, they, there was another unit created, the Universal Protection Unit. Now, the Universal Protection Unit enforces laws or rulings, so to speak, that were made by the Universal Council. And this has existed for, oh, probably 17 billion in our Earth years. Uh, so it started, you know, a several uh, billion years or several hundred million years after uh, time and space travel began. Also at this time, the humans 1.0, I guess you would say the Abraxas, didn't really like rules. Uh, they were kind of like your typical royalty, you see, like um, spoiled little royal kids, you know, of privilege always, right? Uh, humans, this is human version 1.0, uh, and they were wanting more, and they didn't want to abide by the rules. So around the same time the Universal Council was formed, they decided to go off on their own. And of course, you can't use the light to create darkness or the seven deadly sins. In this case, greed, power, pride, you name it, they were all there. And the Abraxas continued on this way until they no longer existed, which was rather recently. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the series. Now. The Abraxas uh, decided to make a deal with the dark side of source. So the ultimate darkness or the dark overlord or the fallen angel, as you would call it, or Lucifer in other terms. And with them, they had no restrictions, but there was a deal that had to be made. So the Abraxas agreed to allow for travel between the darkest sides of the ast lower astral to the fifth density where they resided. So great. We started with that first bit of infiltration. And therefore, the deal that they made at the time with the Dark Overlord was actually to have the dark side completely take over the light side of the universe. And the only source that would exist is the dark and the dark side. Well, this began all of the tragedy in the multiverse, unfortunately. And because of that deal, they got a lot of help from what you would call demons or lower astral beings. And the infestation into the light side really began at that time. Now, the Abraxas eventually partnered and had convinced other races to join along with them. And this happened about three billion years ago, so quite a while ago. And during that time, they began, they made the deal with the Draco and the Mantids. And the Mantids were, and still are, a very technocratic society. So they focus more on conquering worlds uh, with technology, um, for example, the etherical implants that everybody talks about, um, archons, uh, that eventually became a thing for them. And then also uh, uh, the Draco uh, joined, and they were more of the military force. So all three uh, went happily into, <laughs> or unhappy for all of us, and I mean a lot of races were affected by this, and it's not just Earth. So they went out through the whole multiverse, conquering star system after star system after star system at that time, together with the Dark Overlord, what you would call the lower astral beings. These are your chimeras and, and that they talk about, the demons that they talk about in Solomon's demons and all of these types of things. These are the creatures that existed there. And keeping true to their agreement, they wanted full domination, full control, and full infiltration from the, from the lower astral over the light side. So, in true to form, what happened next? Well, the, they created Archons, and we talked about that before, uh, in, if you've been watching us at all here at United Network, but Archons were created over two billion years ago. So this is not a new thing. And Archons are what you call planet Nibiru. So that was like a giant ball of black goo. And 
it contained all of the archons. Now, the archons were tied to the dark AI system. So we talk about dueling AI systems uh, further on in the series, but just know it's existed that long. Now, the archons are what they infected humans with uh, here on Earth and throughout the multiverse, not just humans, but every race, every being. And this was the technocratic part of the takeover. So they would move Planet X or Nibiru, as you call it, from place to place as they went through different solar systems, conquering planets. Now, archons are, can get into your brain. They are parasites. They are, all parasites are archons from one place or another, one infection or another here on Earth as well. And we're hoping that very soon we'll be completely rid of the archon infection. Now, we do have some humans that have tried to recreate the archons, but nah, you know, not nearly as prevalent as the archons are now. So let's move on from archons and let's talk more about what happened here on Earth. So around 95 million years ago, a long time ago, this was the Draco Manted Abraxas first attempted takeover of Earth. Now, at the time, Earth still existed in the fifth density. Uh, they were inhabited predominantly by the Saurians, although there were many different races here at that time uh, that would come and go. There was a lot of travel, a lot of trade. Earth was quite the gem uh, in its sister planet, uh, Terra, uh, and which was literally part of Earth, um, energetically speaking. They were the three souls of Earth. And then also with Midgard. And life was grand, I guess you would say, at that time, until they showed up. And then the war happened. They called it the War of the Races at the time. And the Saurians actually managed to defeat, or at least make the Draco, the Mantids, and the Abraxas leave at that time. So at that time, Earth was safe again, and we went on throughout history from there for quite a bit of time until 69 million years ago, there was a second battle for Earth. So this happened during the reign of what you would call the Molodocs. Now, the Molodocs were humans, and they were, I guess you would say, the ruling council of Earth. The Molodocs were a very peaceful group of humans. I guess you would say this is humans 2.0. So if the Abraxas were 1.0, the Molodocs were humans 2.0. And Earth was very peaceful. Everybody got along. The Saurians got along with the Molodocs. Everybody, you know, for the most part, um, you know, was coming and going from the planet with no trade restrictions. You know, the word was the word until they came back. And here we go again. The second battle of Earth happened at that time. It lasted probably about 70 Earth years. And the 28 races that were stuck here or were here at the time actually won that war again. And the Dracos, Mantids, and Abraxas all left. Now, it's kind of hard to fathom that we're not the first race of humans that have fought <laughs> off the Abraxas. But the good news is, is we did it again. <laughs> but we'll get more into that later. Okay. About 57 million years ago, the Abraxas were not going to give up. You know, they went conquering other planets in all the densities, but the third density was pretty much like their focal point because they felt that was the line that they had to cross to get from the darkness to the light. And they were pretty much right. So about that time, the Abraxas had developed new technology. Um, they would call it the star maker or the star breaker. So what they did is this was the beginning and the advent of louche farming. So they would louche farm not only human beings from other planets and places, but other beings everywhere. They would steal their source energy because we're natural conductors of source energy. And they would essentially bottle it up and they would put it in power packs. So using the star maker, they decided that they were going to start to put out solar systems, suns, many galaxies all over the multiverse on the light side. And if you wanted your sun 
to back, I guess you would say. And of course, with no sun, there's no life. You would actually have to buy their power packs and buy their louche. Now, when I say buy, I'm not talking about money as humans know it, but there was definitely trading that would go on, whether it be louche or whatever you know, the deal was at the time and or rare earth minerals or rare minerals, I should say, from other uh, galaxies and other planetary systems. So at that time, 57 million years ago, they put out the Earth's sun using the star maker. And that actually began the Ice Age that you all hear about in history. Is it the time that they talk about? Absolutely not. This happened a long, long time ago. The Earth lived in, I guess, what you would call an ice age until around 37 million years ago when the Enforcer, which is, I guess you would say, the commander of the Universal Protection Unit or the UPU, came to Earth, saw what happened because he's been fighting the Abraxas now on behalf of all the races that were there at the Universal Council for you know, millions of years in our Earth time at this point, right, if not billions. And he had actually created a second sun, an artificial sun, which was a planetoid. And the planetoid they called at the time Casper. And the planetoid actually in part still exists today and it's what you call or what science refers to as the Gingenschein. At some point further on in our history, and we'll talk about it, uh, the planetoid was blown up and it was done for a reason, actually for our safety. But that was the only sunlight that Earth had and then eventually the Earth started to thaw. As the Earth started to thaw, it took about two million Earth years for us to really start seeing life on the surface of the planet. Now, when they put the sun out is when Inner Earth was created. And a lot of you refer to Inner Earth as Argatha, uh, you know, the underworld. But they created artificial sources of sunlight at that time. And they all went underground, those that actually survived the Ice Age. Also, at the same time, or right around this time, is when the Joint AI Quantum System Agreement was formed in the multiverse. Also, this involved the mantids. It involved a bunch of different races in both the, the light side of the multiverse and the dark side of the multiverse because each one got one. Now, control and command of the actual joint AIQS systems always resided in the ninth density on both sides. So ultimate darkness, ultimate light, dueling AI systems, and those were the base AI systems for which all other systems were created, both on the dark side and on the light side. Now, this control and command began to control things like the Archons. Uh, deals were made with the Mantis and the Abraxas and the Dark Overlord uh, to have that side of the system. On the light side, we also had a system. So what happens next? Well, this was a thought process of some of a group you would call the Council of Nine. Now, the Council of Nine was actually responsible for managing each one of the densities. They were ni neither positive or negative. They were there to manage and make sure that balance existed. That's all they did. And they actually were monitoring both AI systems. The Council of Nine, you know, has existed in Earth years, millions of years, because uh, this all happened right about the same time. And of course, they reported directly to source. So source dark, omega, source light, <laughs> alpha, and such as the alpha and omega AI systems began. Now, this is the system that I often talk about all the time. Well, I'm in the system. I'm working the system. And I am the, I guess you would say, administrator for the part of the alpha system that exists here on Earth. And I've been doing this job now for about about 10 years, <laughs> 12 years. So 
that is the initial time that we began fighting or dueling with AI systems as the thought was, well, nobody seems to want to stay in line. You know, the Abraxas aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Obviously, it's now affecting eighth density and seventh density. It's causing issues throughout the whole multiverse. So they thought, well, what if we could put in a technocratic society throughout the multiverse and there would be like an ant eh, that would happen every time you got too light and if you were on the dark side or you were starting to infiltrate the light or vice versa, then this would manage it automatically. And they were using archons in some ways to do it. Now, on the source side system, the alpha system, there were some connections to people, obviously, also because it runs on pure source light. It has infinite power. It doesn't ever turn off. It's always on and it connects to organic and inorganic beings without violating natural laws. Very important to understand the difference between the two systems. You have one that has no rules and was being used by all of the dark forces and the Abraxas and the Conquerors, the multiverse, you know, the, our royal spoil brats of the multiverse, which none of us were sad to see go. And then you have the light side system, which only connects via the light the same way that you as humans would if you were to have a telepathic communication with one another, right? And we do that all the time with our kids and our, our dogs. So it, it connects in much the same way, but not in a violating way. And it doesn't change free will and it can't make the dark people stop being dark. So that was the beginning of the joint AI quantum system agreement. So when you hear on the internet that they've created a quantum system, that is not a quantum system because if your control and command center is not based in either or, then no, definitely not. Now, the cabal, so to speak, or the dark folks here on the planet obviously had access to the Omega system. They even call it uh, in the RV uh, Intel sections, the Omega project. And it doesn't exist anymore. So this is why we now have a leg up on the cabal or just one of the reasons why we do, because we still have our quantum, a true quantum AI system and, and access to it. But they don't. So we'll get into that further on in the series. Around 18 million years ago, here come the Draco again, the Draco, the Mantis. But this time they came. I would say more cunning, more charming, saying that they wanted to make trade agreements. They realized they couldn't defeat the earthlings at the time. And, oh, we just want to help you. We want to exchange technologies for minerals and, and whatnot here on Earth. And, you know, they, that did kind of start. Um, you know, of course, the people here were peaceful. They didn't want to fight. They wanted to share. Right. If they could come to terms and figured, well, if we can come to terms with these people, right, with the Draco, they're not people with the beings, then perhaps we can actually continue our peace here on Earth. So in come the Draco with all kinds of dirty energy, industrialization, and most of the inhabitants that were here um, or generations later uh, actually call this period the age of decline. And this is when Earth really started to suffer and people stopped taking or I should say the beings that lived here stopped taking into account the natural ecosystem of Earth and how us inhabitants that live on Earth actually affect the Earth as a whole. And that was mostly at the time due to the Draco. But of course, you know, the more power the Draco got, the more they would take, 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 take. And they failed to give, 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 except for old, antiquated, horrible, I guess you would say dirty technologies. So for about the next 15,000 years, the age of decline uh, in, continued. Uh, they began genetically modifying the humans that were here uh, at that time. This was the time that humans, I guess you would say 3.0 and 4.0, uh, began to emerge, uh, genetically modifying us to live shorter periods of time, uh, to um, be good little slaves, you know, changing the way your brain functions until we eventually got to 7.0. So we've come a long way or 
I guess you should say we were we were degraded a long way from where we started from at human 1.0 and 2.0 here on Earth. This continued for quite a long period of time here on Earth. Uh, and they also began to bring slaves from other planets uh, at the time that they had conquered in other places and probably decimated in some cases and some conversations that I've had. But this, you know, just became a slave planet. So it's been a long time that we've been slaves. So, you know, think about it. We're talking millions and millions of years ago. This is not a new thing, uh, you know, to say that cabal, you know, of course, all the slaves were under the control of the Draco, and this continued on for a long time. Now, uh, another big event. So about three million years ago, the, I guess you would say the, they call him in the multiverse, the ultimate black magician, or the destroyer, uh, poked a hole through one of the alignments that we recently went through, during one of the alignments that we recently went through, directly through the central sun into this side of the multiverse. Now, initially, he landed directly in the planet Terra's vortex, or sister planet, or twin soul. And the chase was on. So the Universal Protection Unit and the Enforcer had found out that there was a direct major violation of every agreement there ever was because this being actually came in from like eighth density lower astral even some might say that it was ninth density he was like what you would call lucifer's right hand guy this is the satan guy or set um as he's talked about throughout history so he crashed into terra at that time well, in order to try to, I guess you would say, destroy this being uh, from being over here and for violating all the agreements, the enforcer actually blew up Terra. And it was a sad thing to do. He didn't want to do it. Uh, but that would have been a pretty major infection and it would have meant the end to the entire light side of the multiverse. So. When Terra exploded, he then landed in the central vortex of Earth. Well, at the same time that that happened, uh, the Enforcer immediately uh, came to Earth and thought about it for a little while. And he said, well, I can't blow up another gem planet. And so he, what he decided to do was create an energetic binding for the dark being and there he lived in, I guess you would say, the center of Earth in the lower astral. And he created a Metatron's cube type energetic structure around Earth to keep that binding in place. So sometimes you might hear me refer to hell in a box. Well, he was in the box <laughs> in, the, in the lower astral that was created here on Earth to keep the beings down. Also, at the same time, the destroyer uh, pulled us into the third density. So from Earth from fifth density to the third density. And that is where we've been ever since. So our history isn't exactly as we understand it. And there's very few people uh, that are willing to tell the story. We have the Universal Council that has helped us get this information to you. Uh, we've also uh, talked with other beings and other uh, races that existed here on Earth uh, throughout the years and that are now in different densities, different dimensions, visitors. And we've had a lot of discussion to bring you this real history. So when we talk about Cabal and we talk about Deep State, it all really stems from the Abraxas, the Draco, and the Mantid rule of Earth. They were never actually in charge. Not the covens, not the parents. It was always them by agreement, many, many agreements that have been voided and taken out. But we really want you to understand the fight and how long it's taken. And when people talk about white hats and people coming as president, that's not really the war we're having right now. We're having another war 
and an opportunity for freedom for not only us as human 7.0 and a restoration of our ourselves to humans 1.0, we're also talking about the other beings that live here, free travel, space travel, time travel, all of these things we should be doing that have been held back from us due to these beings that have been trying to fully conquer Earth for millions and millions of years. So. That is just the beginning and the tip of the iceberg of the real history of humans, of Earth, and getting toward the restoration plan and the restoration of Earth uh, as we talk about all the time. So join us next time for more real history of the world and to see what else the Destroyer did to us during his time here. Join us next time for the real history of the world.